welcome to another Ghost Hunt with Felix Doe TV. Today we're at Leyston Abbey in Suffolk. And as always during these investigations, I'm joined by Paul Salmon, our resident medium, and Sarah Jones, fellow paranormal investigator. I don't know where they are at the moment, but we'll go and find them. Now, the Abbey has stood on this site since 1363, and it was actually founded by Robert de Ufford, Earl of Suffolk. The Abbey prospered for about 200 years, but then, during the reign of Henry VIII, it was dissolved, and the religious order that were based on this site was driven out. It was actually, believe it or not, turned into a farm, and over the centuries became the ruin that we see today. But did the former inhabitants of this Abbey ever really leave? Locals claim that they've seen ghostly monks wandering amongst the ruins. And there's stories of secret tunnels and a holy fawn that supposedly only blossomed on Christmas Day. And there's even a legend of buried treasure. We're here to find out. So join us now on a ghost hunt around Leyston Abbey. Lovely to see you again. Hello. Hello John. All right. Hello. Sarah. So here we are at Leyston Abbey. Yeah. We have you ever been here before? Not I at have all, been John. here before. You have? I've have you been called? here several no, times. It's all new to me, John. Right. Well, let's see what we find. Should be interesting. John. Yeah. I've got an incredible feeling come over. <laughs> really? <laughs> yeah. Um, Someone lost a hand. Lost a hand? Yeah, because my hand's gone dead. Oh, really? So just come down there. Well, completely numb, no feeling? The hand, from there, off. So, I don't know, I mean, it's a minute thing, but I've got to say what I give. Does it I feel like it was a punishment or an accident or...? I don't... See, my mind doesn't say punishment in this right. sort of... in an abbey yeah. or wherever we are. But, um... It, it, well, it was significant to this person, wasn't it? He mm -hmm. lost a hand. And I'm just picking up his energy here, and the energy of a cook as well. Cook. Yeah. Um, well, that that'd be interesting because there was a, a cooking area just over there. Just so. here, is it? Well, not in this part here. No. This was the the cloister yeah. where the monks would meet. They would exercise, chat, do a bit of learning. Mm. No, I'm getting pigs running around the place. <laughs> now that is significant. Is it? Yeah. Very significant. Really, pigs. But I do. I, fit, I don't know if it's a one-armed cook, <laughs> one, -armed cook. one hand cook. Yeah. But it, it, it's tying up. It's linking with the cook. Right. Unless I just happen to be in this place near the cookhouse. Could, could it have been an accident? Did he lose his hand that way, or I was think it, it deliberate? Is. No, it's more of a an accident. A cooking accident. Yeah. Cooking accident. Maybe. Yeah. Yeah. But um, he it made his personality in a way. Did it? People look out for him. Say, oh, that's a, that's that's so and so. We know him because he's got one hand yeah. missing. Yeah. So maybe we could go over to the cooking. Yeah. Yes, area. why not? Yeah. Why not? Okay. This is opposite the wall, isn't it, where we were just now? That's correct. Yep. So I wasn't far off the cookhouse. Yeah. Well this is actually where the monks would have eaten their food. Uh -huh. of, you know, they would have been in here, long tables, they would have been they would they actually used to drink a lot of beer, believe it or not, because water was so contaminated, they couldn't take the chance. Uh, and while they were eating, you'd have one of the, the canons reading from the Bible. Yeah, you so, would have. So this was a, a great place for them, sort of social area, you might as well say. We have a doorway here, and I can see the monks coming in, and as they did, they would have touched the holy water and done a cross and come in. And, and Are you picking know. up a sort of date, a period for this? A date of 1400, around there, John. That'd be I'd, significant, definitely. Oh, is it really? That yep. would be. I yeah. was going to say, I've got nothing significant to say about the 1400. The 1400. But I'm just picking up 1400. Mm. Right. Um, I'm picking up the the cook, actually, once again. The cook again, right. right. Because he, even 
even that in those days, he was under so much pressure. Of course, I mean, what did you have the, the different times of worship? Mm -hmm. yeah. The morning, the matins, or whatever they're called. Yes. <laughs> and it was a bit of a laugh. They just say, "Oh, come on, get, we've got to go somewhere." So he was a joker, yeah. in other words. Well, you either laugh or cry with him, I think, because he had to have it done. Yeah. And he knew he had to have. Cooks always done. do have strong personalities. Yeah. Having worked in hospitality and catering, cooks but, are very, very, very strong. So it's not surprising that his spirit or something is still here. Yeah. But they had to wait. I mean, you couldn't wait for him because you've got to start your worship at a certain time. Mm. But they used to joke and say, "Oh, hang on a bit." knowing that they couldn't. Yeah. And he'd rush in and join them or make up for it in private somewhere yeah. later. Jolly chap, though. Mm. But uh, hard work. So what sort of age? Is he sort of middle-aged, <coughs> young? or? I'm getting 37-ish. 37. 37, 38. And yeah. you're still getting that sort of time period of 1400s? Well, that's what they gave me. I've just heard yeah. 1400. Well, that's, that, again, as we that's said, quite that's quite significant. That is. But even the pig was around here just running free. Right. So do you reckon it was a pet then? Or no, maybe no. It, it, was, it was, wasn't a pet. It was I expect there was treating. one that should have been for dinner. Right. But right. they couldn't bear themselves to do it. Right. And they just okay. let it run around. But um, there were other pigs as well. But I've got one significant pig. So I don't know if that means anything to you. <laughs> significant pig. So, um, so this cook, is it residual or is he in visitation at any given no, time? No, it's all... goes to the images. Yeah. Right. I, he's not here. And um, I think when they passed over, they knew they are going somewhere. OK. Uh, and if, if they are here, it's just a visit and to say hello and they're gone. Right. Yeah. Leighton Abbey is one of the grandest it is. around it is. the area, which is why the ruins are still quite substantial. So. This would have been a very big room with lots of activities going on in here. Preferably, obviously, all the vibrancy of it all. So. But I must say, it's strange. I've got lots and lots of water gushing down that wall. Water. Water. Um, yeah, it's a ruin. Mm. Water, there would have been leaks. But I've got lots of water. Lots of water. Yeah, lots and lots of water. <laughs> it's right. strange. Um, maybe that's in your history book. I don't know. Is that for a, was it for a purpose, or do you think it was just... No, it's some sort of... I don't know. All I'm seeing is it's lots like a fountain side. Lots of water gushing down. Well, there could could be a connection. Right, we were just walking past this particular archway and Paul was drawn to it, weren't you? Yeah, you mentioned beer or ale just now. Yeah. And there's one personality, well, yeah. personality, for want of a better word, a monk, who loved his ale. And he'd go and hide. When he, in, <laughs> in, in, and I've got a feeling he hid in here. I don't know what what is going on here. But I can just see him dashing off when he shouldn't. <laughs> having, a, having a quick, it's quick ale. Having a quick ale. They say, where's so he gone? In here. Yeah, hiding just sneaking here. off. Well, I believe to... this was probably used as a storage area. Mm -hmm. So again, they could have put their ale in here and he perhaps sneaked in for a quick tip off, eh, Sarah? Yeah. I, yeah. Don't, I don't think he would have gone anywhere um, sacred to have his drink. Right. So that might be it then. Yeah. Because the feeling is he's just picking rushing up his off. garments, rushing off, <laughs> and a quick one to himself. But as I said, monks loved their beer. They did, didn't so. they? But he certainly did. So we should go through here? Yeah, yeah we'll go through there. So we're looking down, Paul, on what would have been the monks' dining area, and that's an artist's impression of what it would have looked like. Yeah. And as you can see, massive window. Windows there. Yeah. And obviously the entrance that we went in was under here. Yes. Yeah. So the floor level itself, you can see when you look down, would have almost been where the tops of the ruins are now. Mm. So we were underneath in the hub of the kitchens. So I was getting an impression of a canopy downstairs, mm. not a normal roof light. And that is like a canopy, isn't it? It's, yes. Or is it? But it's a temporary canopy I was getting, Un unlike canvas canopies today or tents. Yeah. But there was some sort of temporary canopy put up. But then um, I don't know where you'd find that in history books. Right, so we're having a rest now. So tell us, you've picked up some other stuff. Well, I'm doing a bit of psychometry, John. Mm -hmm. So Honestly. what is psychometry? Psychometry is, I believe, that every little object, thing, if you like, holds a memory. Yeah. Holds something. And I'll try to link into that picture to see what it can tell me about the history of the place. And it, it can tell you quite a lot. I haven't got any dates for you. Right. But I feel like something was signed here, something significant. There was a meeting and a signing. Right, right that's significant, and definitely. It, mm -hmm. yep. it, it affected people not just here but outside. Right. In a large area. Yes, that's correct. Yep. Yeah. Is it? Yep. That's correct. I'm glad you can confirm things because I think yeah. I go a bit potty <laughs> at times. Right. 
Um, I'm getting Georgian times as well where something happened. But let, let, let's... Mm. So, anyway. Um, there was a boy who got lost and he came here as well. And they took him in. All right. right. Okay. And the monks, the yeah, canons. The monks took him in. Yeah. And um, I don't know how long, long he stayed, but I, I've got the feeling, the emotion that he's just yeah. lost. Right. And they said, we'll look after you as well. Okay. Now I'm getting the word Largo or Cargo. Argo. Cargo, Largo. Cargo, Largo. Cargo, Largo, cargo, Largo. Cargo, Largo right. <laughs> but I also think that with the cargo comes trade from here as well. Mm -hmm. A backing and forward. But I can't tell you what the trade was. Right. Okay. I can't tell you what the goods were. But I know it's a, well, obviously it's a big significant place of worship. Mm -hmm. But also that they did, like their candle making, their ale. Monks but, often but, did sell things that they but made. But there's something else, I can't get a grip on it, which was exported or imported as well. Right. Mm -hmm. Maybe you can tell me afterwards. I should have to consult the paperwork on that. Yes, we yes. will, we yeah. will. Yeah. But it's interesting you said about, while we're here, that you got a feeling of meetings yeah. and paperwork being signed. Yeah. But this is unlike any just normal paperwork for this us. Is significant. This is something significant. Right. Like, sit around the table and... Well, this... This is actually the chapter house mm. of the abbey, and this is where the canons would have had their meetings, uh -huh. discuss problems with the abbey, running mm -hmm. the abbey. Even locals would have come in if they'd had any problems, they would have discussed it with them. Mm. The abbot would have chaired the meeting, mm. and documents would have been signed. So you're spot on. This, this mm. was their, their main meeting area. Oh, it's just here? Yes, mm -hmm. yeah. Ah, well, <laughs> that's, that's made me happy then. Yeah. Yes, yeah. Picking up the meetings and the paperwork. And it would have effect outside the monastery in the yeah. town and beyond. Yeah. Because quite often they did seek, like John's just said, the monk's word on things. Because obviously, yeah. if you had a firm belief, God's word was the final word. Mm. And they often sought abbots and canons' opinions on things. Um, anything right down from whose cow is it? You mm. know, they used to do, they quite yeah. often used to do that. So it would affect a, a significant area, wouldn't it? It would. So it'd be local. And, and someone of importance came here as well. And it's a big hoo-ha going on, or so-and-so is paying a visit. Yeah. So all the best candles came out, all the, <laughs> right. the best day all come out. Yeah. And, uh, and that's a, someone high up in the church right. to come here. Okay. And, and you, uh, you picked up the Georgian period as well, didn't you? Yeah, I felt like m meetings took place here in Georgian times, but... Well, I, I, I obviously can't. the Abbey was uh, dissolved under Henry yeah. VIII, but yeah. there was a, a Georgian property here. People did live here in Georgian times. Oh, did they? Yes. Because I'm just getting Georgian. As yes. they still are, actually. Yeah. yeah. There's still right. part of it is. Is Georgian. They're Georgian yeah. buildings, are they? Yeah. Uh, and part of it's actually medieval as well, but people still live on the site. 1700 as well, I'm being given. 1700. 1700s. Well, that, yeah. Yeah. And, uh, but it's a little boy, I just got a sense, a sense of grief and loss with him. But then again, that may not be in the history books or anything. It's just what I'm picking up from this. I'm not aware of anything about a little boy, but there again, you're talking about hundreds of years of history. Yeah. Yeah. Not everything's going to be recorded. That's the problem, isn't it, Sarah? Yeah, I mean, it's also like... So, Paul, you're picking up something again? Yeah, straight away. Um, as I look up, I see a new thatched roof. Yeah. Well, it looks new. Right. But straight away, I've got fire. There's a massive fire here. I don't know how it started. Mm -hmm. I just It's like a sentence where you just know. Yeah. And I just know 100% about a fire. So maybe right. you can tell me more about it. It was a significant happened. fire here, wasn't there? In the 1380s, there was a major fire in this very spot. Yeah. And you're spot on. We say, so I can assure the viewers, we yep. didn't tell Paul about this. He knew nothing about this fire. But yes, in, in the 1380s, there was a fire and on this spot. And it destroyed pretty much most of... Most of it, didn't yeah, it? And yeah, and they, they had to undertake major, a major rebuilding project. Yeah. So you, you're quite right. It. But was it an accident, like a, ca a candle they or something? They don't know, do they? That's not actually we don't know. recorded as we what, don't what know. started yeah. it. They don't know, but it, it could was, have been anything, It really. was probably an accident because yeah. you had open fires. Yeah. Oils, candles. Yeah. I think it's, that's all it was. Yeah. But um, no, it was huge. Mm. Massive. It was. It well, if was. you imagine this is, this is a massive building here, so if it went up in flames, it would have been seen from miles yeah. around as well. Everyone would have seen the monastery go up, and it yeah. would have been a, a hell of a fire. And once it ignites, you can't stop yeah, you it. Can't. it just, exactly. 
And not only that, you picked up on the water yep. coming down the walls. Ah. Yeah. And that's why we got a bit, we were, yeah. you know, we were yeah. looking happy. Because yeah. obviously they would have used water to put it out or try to put it out. Mm. Lots and lots of water. Yeah. Exactly. So you spot on. Marvellous. Yeah. And you got the right area as well. Not bad, eh? Yeah, that's good. Let's <laughs> move on. Because they, they, it's um, in the cloister as well. There's parts in the cloister that you can see remnants of it and you can see remnants of it everywhere we go. Oh. I think it's the word to use, isn't it? And full of rabbit warrens as yes. well. As we're coming down here, yeah. I think I've come in the future a bit more after 1400. Right. I'm getting sanctuary given to French troops or French people. French uh, people? The right. Napoleonic Wars or...? Oh, well, I guess so, it could yeah. be. Yeah. Um, they had this, uh, a special holding place where they took in people after sanctuary. All oh, right. Um, that's what I'm guessing. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, and this is one of the most impressive intact sections of it, actually. If you look all round, well, there we've got was some quite lovely, a lot of it still actually still intact. Yeah, we've got some lovely archways and... Because yeah. this was quite a significant room for the monks. I don't know if you're picking anything no, up. what was it, John? Well, it was basically used to store their you know, ho holy uh, oh, the relics instruments and, and yeah. relics and stuff. Yeah. Sacristy. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, see all the little... Nooks and crannies, and yeah. they, there, was, they there were special terms for these, yeah, you know. Yeah, but yeah. Yeah. <laughs> they would have kept their religious books in here, candles, yeah. and it's, it's basically a storage area. Mm. Yeah, so let's just so you're picking up Paul <coughs> self harm, someone yeah, hurting there's, themselves. There's a piece of wood here, and someone's just self harming, getting fed up and depressed. Mm. I didn't think so in a monastic place, but it happened, and it did go on. And the um, the latrines weren't that hygienic either, right? Because someone's very feeling very sick about it all, right? And that's brought on the bit of self harming as well. Okay. They're just absolutely fed up with the conditions. Conditions. Well, obviously, in the medieval period, the sanitary arrangements wouldn't have been as good as no. ours. No. <laughs> no. So, and I can imagine if we'd gone back in time, they'd probably stink a bit. Well, yeah. yeah. But. Um, if you go to any medieval reenactment, yes. <laughs> <laughs> but having said that, it's a good place of learning and... Mm. Oh, it was a centre of learning. Yeah, yeah. All these abbeys were centres of learning and that's what one of the tragedies when they were destroyed, that they threw out the monks or the canons mm. and the area lost a great, you know, the hub of the community because it was not just a centre of learning. They would heal people here. Mm. It was basically a hospital. They would even teach people here. And of course, under Henry VIII, all that was swept away. Yeah. I know that that guy with the hand missing again. Hand missing again. Yeah, he was a my busy hand's fellow, wasn't he? He was, he was. <laughs> he was around here as well. So we're picking up the name Thomas, but that could be you know, Thomas. just a name, Thomas, isn't it? Right. That doesn't prove anything. We'll um, check that, won't we? We shall go check but that. Brother Thomas. Brother Thomas. <laughs> we all know the information's in my back pocket. Yeah. And I've got okay. a bit of extra information you as well. Indeed, yeah. which is over Mike's shoulder, so. Yeah, right. Okay, shall we move on? Yes, yeah, so why we don't yeah. go, go through here, shall we? Yeah. Right, so we're here in the centre of the abbey. Lovely. This is where the monks would have worshipped. And you can see a reconstruction of the original altar over there with a cross. Yeah. I'm doing a bit more psychometry, John. Okay. And I believe they had a pottery here as well. I'm they... picking up pots and busy life. I mean, yes, a, a life of worship, but also a community. There are lots of going on candle making, beer, ale, mm. and pottery. Yeah, yes. doing the pottery for their own use or pottery maybe for the trade that you made? Well, yes, both, on. I a think. Bit of both. A bit of both. If they're doing it for trade, they mm. might as well do their own thing. I'm also picking up the army are coming. Yeah. The army? Yeah. The army. <laughs> I'm getting the army coming. Picking well, up one monk who did the letter writing with his quill. Yes. And he's saying to me, my arm ate and ate because so much, so much letter writing he did. Yeah. And of course, the, the lighting conditions mm. wouldn't have been that good in those days. So and they, the would have, they would have spent hours on it because a lot of them were drawings as well. Yeah. If anyone's ever looked at um, monastic paperwork, mm. they would the art involved in it as well. Mm. Um, and they did, they took a lot of pride and a lot of time over creating their documents, mm. Mm. which is why to see them go up in flames when they sacked the monasteries. Mm. Can you tell me, was there a little holding, uh, you mentioned itself, the um, sanctuary. Mm. Was there a naughty corner? A naughty corner? Yeah, I'm picking up like... If a monk was naughty, he'd be put in a certain place. Mm -hmm. Well, it did happen. Did it? Yeah. If, if they were disciplined and they were punished. Yeah. You know, you think a monk's being holy and holy. Mm. But I'm picking up urban 
a naughty student would be put somewhere. Yeah, that, that would fit. That would definitely fit, wouldn't it, Sarah? Yeah, yeah. yeah. They, they quite often had areas where they used to leave them uh -huh. for solitude and contemplation and repentance. Yeah. And they also had physical punishment yep. as well, which would yeah. fit yeah. in with the, you know, even the feelings of self-harm. Well, yes, maybe a few lashes, maybe mm. self, uh, mm. self-inflicted. Mm. Yep. And again, it's um, like you said about the pottery and that they would have been, they would have had their own pottery here, making their own utensils. Yeah. And as Sarah pointed out, yeah. it would have been for their own use, and they would have been selling it. And sheep, uh, um, along with the pig, I've got sheep. You got sheep. Well, that's cattle. significant yep. again. That, yeah. Yeah. Especially yeah. in this area, Sarah. Yeah. Especially. Yeah. In, so you're picking up cattle in this yeah. area. I'm quite good with animals. Yeah, I'm picking up yeah. sheep. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and uh, right, Paul. That is we're at what would have been the altar, and you've got the cross there. Can I just say that when we turned the corner just now, yeah. I picked up the head of a person, like a skull. <coughs> a skull. It, it might have been a relic, but I believe it, it started off as a whole head of a person. Right. Then maybe they kept it and it became skull -like. There is something I do know, but I'm going to have to consult somebody on this afterwards yeah. because there is a story I've heard that I know for a fact isn't on our paperwork. So I will have to ask somebody else about that. And, uh, and later you know. it was put in a little cabinet made for itself. Well, that would fit because, as I said earlier, during the investigation, you would have had pilgrims come into these abbeys and monasteries and they would have had holy relics. You would yeah. have had skulls of saints or alleged saints, yeah. even bits of uh, the Holy Cross, bit, bits of uh, stone from the Holy Mount in Jerusalem and, and everywhere. And, and pilgrims would come, worship and ask for cures or help yep. with problems. Yep. So yes, it could have been the skull of a saint or... And I'm picking up women coming here as well. Mm. I mean, women. monastery, you think of men, mm -hmm. but I'm, I'm picking up women as well coming up to pray here as well. And a yeah. lot of shouting yeah. going on over there. Shouting? When, at one time, when prayer was taking place, there's a lot of people outside shouting for attention, uh, trying to get the attention of the monks. Was it aggression or just...? Yeah, it's like aggressive shouting. Um, Any time period for this? Oh, we're going back to 1300 again. 1300. Right. If not 1250 or something. Right. Mm -hmm. But a lot of villagers, women, high pitched voices, men. Um, it's more of a demonstration than a, uh, a, a, a rebel, like right. after blood. Okay. Yeah. It's more like, it's, hey, we, we want something they like that. They were unhappy, you know. <laughs> so, so we're standing in this corner, Paul, because yeah. you were drawn here. I'm drawn here, John. And Sarah, when the religious ceremony took place, mm -hmm. I feel like there's somebody watching making sure it went according to plan. Really? Making sure nothing insignificant went on. Um, so it's not like the, the person taking the service. No. It, it's there is somebody else. But in this area. Yeah. Observing but, the service. But, but my imagination can't imagine it. I can't, my mind says, no, it wouldn't be here. Not so close. Mm. But I've got this impression of a man all in black, even, even his head is covered. Right. I don't like saying it here in an abbey, but a nasty piece of work. Really? Mm. Who's very strict and had to make sure what should go on does go on. Right. Just mm. doing his job. Right. But it's something not very pleasant about him. And so he would stand here, you well, say? Well, I'll get an impression here, right. mm. but my mind says... And it, would it be so, is it something that you feel might have been irregular every time a service took place, or do you think it no, was not, a specific time? Not every time. It's like now and again when he when he had the urge to check oh, up. Oh, yeah. yeah. How very strange. Maybe it's an outsider checking out. It's a chap I'm talking about. <laughs> mm -hmm. Well, he has got black. He's got black on there. Is his head covered? No. No, no. He's... I mean, you're, from, from what you say, it sounds like somebody's actually almost anonymously standing. You know, they, they're trying to not be in the... Yeah. Is that right? Yeah, exactly. Exactly. Trying to be covered up, not yeah. to be seen. It's made... So what are you picking up now, Paul? I just thought I'd do a bit of big psychometry, John. Yeah. <laughs> and I'm picking up the year 1200. Right. But I don't know why. The, it, this pill has just given me 1200. Okay. Um, oh, if I could tell you why, I'd be over the moon. Right. Well, but maybe you can tell me later on again. Well, it is significant because actually some of the stone that we see today is from another area. Yeah. There was another abbey at Minsmere and they moved here because that site was too swampy and they brought some of the stone with them. What, in 1200? In yes, including yeah. this, oh, including yeah. this. Really? Yeah. And this is uh, actually Norman, so that would oh, fit in. Yep. 
So you're quite happy with me saying yes, 1200 yeah. then? Yeah, yeah. So you're spot on. Right. It's amazing what they what you can pick mm -hmm. up. And yeah, yeah, yeah. Now a lot of the fabric of this abbey is from the previous abbey at Minsmere, which was built in Norman times. Uh, right. So that that would fit. And this is actually you say Norman stonework. Right. Start. So we're back in the cloister, Paul, and you picked up something again. Yeah, just here, John. Right. I could see them in my mind's eye playing games like bowl. I don't well, know if they play. All in the just area around here. Or just, just in this bit. Yeah. Playing French bowls, balls. Yeah. Right. But I don't know if they would have played that. But that's what I'm picking up. Um, leapfrog. Leapfrog. <laughs> leapfrog that was in monks. In the Georgian period, wouldn't it? Yeah, when, yeah. when it was actually a house, you know, they'd been using areas to play in, so that would But these are the monks in their habits. You're picking yeah, up you the are, medieval period. Yeah. Right. Well, again, as I said before, this is a cloister, and this would have been an area of relaxation for the, the yeah. canons. They would have exercised here, had a read, and perhaps even had a few too many hours and who knows, started playing ball games and yeah. leapfrog and yeah. whatever. But I'm definitely getting it, I can see it. You can see, literally yeah. see them. Yeah. And it's here? Just here. In this section yeah. here. And with them sitting around the edge, like you say. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and the bell going, the bing, bell. dong, for like end of play time, if you yeah. like. Well, they would have rang a, rang a bell. I mean, they used to have a very, very strict regime of, and it depended on the monasteries, but some of them, they were prayers every 15 minutes, some mm. were prayers every half an hour, some did um, a full worship on the hour. You know, they used to have, they had their recreation time, but the, the structures of each abbey were different time-wise, so we can't generically say, yes, they used to play every, or they used to pray every yeah. 20 minutes, so, but they did have their recreation. This would be like a, 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 a standalone oven type thing. Yeah, right. okay. Um, In the centre. Yeah. Maybe if they made it for mm. ale making or something. Yeah. John, as we just stood here just now, I could see um, a bit of a fight going on. Yeah. Only two people. Okay. Fisticuffs. <laughs> <laughs> and it's so silly. It's over something silly. But things get out of hand, you know, as they do. Yeah. And one thing's led to another. So, so bit... what, what time period was it been? So when it was a religious house? Or... Oh, yes. As it's, 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 um, uh, uh, long as we don't get letters of complaint, it's uh, uh, one of the monks. Right. With somebody, I think, just coming in and who they didn't like. One of the visitors? Yeah, shall we say. And, and it, it happened uh, here? It ha just happened here. But it didn't get too violent, presumably they weren't killed or anything? No, it, I think they both got a telling off, to be honest with you. I'm, I'm sure they were. That's all it was. Done. But um, it, it, it wouldn't have got out of hand. It got out of hand between those two. Yeah. And that was it. Done. Finished. Okay. Right. So you've concluded our investigation at Leyston Abbey. It's quite interesting, isn't it, Sarah? No, it is. And the bit of paper's come out of my back pocket. It certainly has. It has. So, you mentioned in your intro mm -hmm. about the secret tunnels and everything, didn't you? And all yes. the different legends around the area. So shall we do you want to run that through with Paul yeah. and I'll yeah. read this out? Well, there are a few legends connected with the site. Uh, for a start, when the uh, Henry VIII's commissioners came here, they found that it was only about £40 worth of goods uh -huh. and they were a bit suspicious. And the legend is that the monks hid most of their treasure in the cloister. But obviously you didn't pick up no. on that. But again, that is just a legend, so we don't know if there's any truth in that or whether they, they did hide it. There's also stories about tunnels leading from the abbey, believe it or not, all the way to Framlingham. Mm. But I very much doubt if that's true because they just didn't have any technology. What it probably is with a lot of these places, they had drainage channels. And years later, they, you know, after the monastery was destroyed, they would have come across these and thought, oh, what were they for? Oh, the monks must have used them for hiding things or to escape. So, so there's legends of tunnels. And the most interesting is a legend of a holy thorn. A holy thorn, yes. We don't know where it was, mm. but apparently it only uh, bloomed on Christmas Day. Uh -huh. So not the one in Glastonbury. <laughs> well, apparently it was, uh, whether it was a cutting taken from that, I don't mm. know, but there was a holy fawn in this area. It doesn't survive now, we don't know where it was, but that's gone, probably dug up during the Reformation. But those are some of the legends connected with the place, but again, they're just legends, we don't know if there's any basis in fact. So I've got here a brief history of the place for you, Paul. Mm -hmm. um, one of Suffolk's most impressive monastic ruins is in fact Leyston Abbey because it is one of the only ones in the area that isn't quite intact. Um, it's formerly known as St Mary's Abbey, which was founded in 1182 at Minsmere by a powerful lawyer now, Ranulf de, Grand de Granville, 
um, Lord Chief Justice to King Henry II. So it was quite high up at the time. The order of the Abbey was the House of Augustan Canons Regular. So that's the order that we're here. Mm -hmm. um, who followed the Premo John. <laughs> oh dear, that's a long word. Premo, <laughs> Premo Nestrian <laughs> rule. I think I've got that right. So. <laughs> um, unlike monks, their main duties were preaching and pastoral work. So they weren't like normal right. static monks, as people know. The Abbey, formerly known as St Mary's Abbey, was founded obviously in 1182. Um, and its patron, um, basically Lord Chief Justice to King Henry II in 1363, the Abbey was transferred to Leicester, and its patron Robert de Ufford, Earl of Suffolk, to vote his last years to the building. The Abbey eventually became a farm. Oh, animals. Yeah, the yeah. Abbey eventually became a farm until 1928, um, and the Abbey rooms and farm were bought by Miss Ellen Royston um, as a religious retreat for her. Um, when she died in 1946, she bequeathed the house ruins and lands to the Diocese of St Edmundsbury and Ipswich. So, mm. it's, a, it's a great, I mean, like we said about the animals, obviously it was actually becoming a farm. Mm -hmm. um, but obviously throughout the time you had the Reformation, the fire and all sorts of different things going on here, which of course mm. you picked up. And then when they moved it, mm. obviously is where you've got the moving of the stones and everything. Yeah. So, yes. I mean, the, the interesting thing for me was when you were next to that pillar, you picked up the 1200s, and of course, uh -huh. that's when the original abbey was built at Minsmore, the Minsmere, uh -huh. 1200s, brought here. When we were in the main body of the church, you picked up animals, and actually, the main body of the church... Was where the farm? Was a barn, mm. oh, was and it? animals yeah. were kept there. Now, you couldn't have known that, we didn't tell you. No. The interesting thing was that when the abbey was dissolved, it was given to uh, Henry VIII's brother-in-law, Charles Brandon, and he turned it into a farm, oh, so it was full right. of animals. Yeah. Because I could understand pigs for food and stuff, mm -hmm. but then I got a goat. I saw this goat yeah. wandering yeah. around. And yeah, and uh, you said the sheep as well and yeah. everything. So, yeah. But I'm happy about the fire. Yeah. Oh, you got that yeah. in the 1380s. I was the most positive about the fire. And in the area where it broke out. Yeah. So. And you also picked up the name Thomas. If you just hold that a minute. Oh, I'll just hold Sarah. this for a second. Now, there was more than one Thomas connected with the site. There were obviously abbots in charge of the abbey. And got it here in 1488 it was a thomas who was an abbot uh -huh. and there was also another one in 1504 thomas white uh -huh. so you've got two thomases that's not bad then is it so, but we don't know which one no we, we don't know which one. <laughs> so. oh thank you very much well, oh, no. another enjoyable investigation yes and we'll be back again soon with another one who knows where location we'll, unknown isn't exactly it? We'll we, have have to we've yet to we haven't conferred on this one yet not yet be next month though won't it yes okay go. yes We well, just had an interesting experience. We'd finished filming and we were going around to take a few photographs. I was ahead, but something interesting happened, didn't it? We yeah. both turned around at the same time because what did we both see at the same time? Something black, black and just fast. went that way very quickly. Now it was we both. John just literally just asked how big it was. Me and Paul both went like that at the same time. About that big. Quite sizable. And I'm thinking, is it a cat or rat or what was it? But I saw it as a, as a swish. So yeah. as what I saw as, as a as a. Because we both both went, did you see that at the same time? And it just went behind us down there. So it went in this direction? Yeah, and it was not ground height. It was about that sort of height, wasn't it, Paul? But the only place it could go was down the hole. And there's not, it's not even a hole. But it, made, it didn't make a noise? No. So there was no noise. No. So it was black about this big. Yeah. And it just went... And how high was it? About how far from the ground? So like a dog. But very, very fast. Very fast. <laughs> like a black yeah. dog. Well, no, because I didn't even see animal. It went, it went the no, size it was just of a dog. black. It was just black. Just went that way. It was a blob. Yeah. A black like, blob. Yeah. Incredible. It was. And I was, I was there, so I didn't see it. No. Which is rather but annoying. But we both flew. <laughs> we were. Things are getting interesting. Our third investigation. We've had a manifestation. And you didn't see it, John. I didn't see it. and We didn't get it on camera.